Hi guys, welcome to Story Time. I am Anusha, and today we have this amazing book called Romeo Soros and Juliet Rex by Mo O'Hara and Andrew Joyner. Let's meet these two leopards, guys. <laughs> so, can we be friends? <laughs> we'll see. Okay, let's do this, guys. Romeosaurus and Juliet Rusk. Well, Rex. Romeosaurus and Juliet Rex comes from two very different families. Romeosaurus comes from a family of herbivores. They eat plants. Juliet Rex comes from a family of carnivores. They eat oh, everyone. <laughs> so, can we be friends? They ask. But that might mean trouble, especially for Romosaurus family. Mo O'Hara's hilarious nod to Shakespeare creates a delightfully clever spin on a classic tale for young audiences who love to laugh and beloved illustrator Andrew Joyner animates every scene with ridiculously funny characters and that will have kids asking why Shakespeare isn't always performed by dinosaurs. <laughs> It's a love story, Nina. You're in for a treat. Let's do this. Romeosaurus and Juliet Rex. Look at those portraits. Mm, fancy. For Guy, Charlotte and Daniel with love, M.O. For Jane and Michael, A.J. And for everyone. Let's do this. Nina Thiel made a child laugh more. Than Julia Drex and her Romeo Sir. Once upon a time, 150 million years ago, two families, both alike in littleness, lived in the swampland of Verona. Romeo Sir's family were herbivores. Yay! Fans for dinner! Yay! Julia Trex's family were carnivores. Yay! Herbivores for dinner. Yay! <laughs> you can see why the families didn't really get along. One day, Julia Trex was stomping through the swampland on her way to the dinosaur ball. Do my arms look small in this? She asked her nanny, Nurse Adactyl. Of course, dear. Nurse Adactyl answer. Meanwhile, Romusurus was clomping along with his friend Mercutatops on his way to crash the ball. Now, usually when a Stegosaurus and a Triceratops crash a ball, you would know it. But this time they went in disguise because it was a masked ball for carnivores only. Mind you, carnivores only. The carnivores really knew how to throw a party. And Julia Drex was waving her tiny arms in the air like she just didn't care when she spotted a dinosaur who she had never seen before. Wow! He swished his tail at her to say hello. She thumped her tail back to say, I might be casually waving hi or I might just sweating a prehistoric bug. Your call. <laughs> Romeosaurus went over and two dinos danced. They giggled, they talked, they played, and they started to become friends. Do you want to get something to eat? Julia Dress asked as she led Romeosaurus over to the buffet. <gasps> Auntie Gladys! Romeosaurus gulped. <laughs> Romeosaurus rushed to help one ladies off the buffet table and take the apple out of her mouth. Wait, you're a herbivore? Julia Dress asked, taking off Romeosaurus' mask. And you're a carnivore? 
Just then a fight broke out at the dinosaur ball. Apparently, Mercutops had poked Julitrix's cousin Tybalt Rex with his horn while dancing. You better go, Julitrix said, sneaking Romosaurus out during the commotion. Will I see you again? Romosaurus looked back and smiled. He might all. That night, Julitrix looked out from her clifftop balcony. Romosaurus, Romosaurus, where all that oh, Romosaurus. Down here, Romosaurus answered. Stegosaurus is aren't very good at climbing. It's the tail, really, and the weight and complete lack of claws to grip anything. And there's a stone wrap over there, Julitrix interrupted. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Once again, they giggled and played and talked and laughed, and they became true friends. My family would never want me to be friends with you, Juliet Rex said. I mean, I could, inv I could never invite you over for dinner. You would be the main cause. <laughs> My family wouldn't like it either, especially Auntie Gladys, Romusaurus said, sighing. <laughs> then what can we do? Juliet Rex wondered. When Nurse Adactyl woke the next morning, she found that Julitrix's bed had not been slept in, and she found a note. The herbivore is my true friend, so off I go to Swampland's End. Nurse Adactyl flew down to the herbivore's home and trapped her talon on the door. And Gladys answered, Ah! She screamed and fainted. <laughs> Mercutio Tops pulled Auntie Gladys out of the way. Nurse Adactyl showed him Juliatrix's note, and he showed her the note Romishurus had left for him. You have always been a friend to me, but a carnivore has set my heart free. <laughs> Nurse Adactyl made a face. They are not very good at poetry, but they do seem to care a lot about each other, even though they're so different. They have bad poetry in common, I guess, Marquette Tops added. We need to find them. They're headed for the tar pits, and that's dangerous for any dinosaur, herbivore, or carnivore. Mercer Dactyl flapped her wings and carried Marquette Tops over the swampland until they reached the tar pits. They could see something floating on the tar. It was Romusaurus' feathered hat and Juliet Rex's backpack. <gasps> We're too late, shrieked Nurse Adactyl. We should have let them be friends, Murgatops cried. You're right, Nurse Adactyl said. <laughs> then maybe they'd both still be here. <gasps> but we are here. Julitrix said as she and Romosaurus came out from behind the boulder. <gasps> My little dino! Nurse Adactyl gathered Julitrix in a wingy hug. Mercutiotop spluttered. But your hurt? The bug bug? We were just looking for a big stick to fish them out with when you both showed up, Romosaurus said. So, can we be friends? Juliet asked. And just to be clear, carnivore friends don't eat other friends, right? Romosaurus added. <laughs> I could never eat a true friend or might my darling Juliet Rex, Nurse Adactyl said. Then she whispered to Romosaurus, but if you break her heart, you're in a sandwich by lunchtime, you got it? <laughs> so it's a day. Carnivores and herbivores will be friends, <laughs> Mercutop said. And they all shook hands on it. Well, except for Juliet Rex, as hers wouldn't reach, but she nodded in agreement. And they lived.
happily ever after. Oh. Until now we know what happens here. Mm. At least it's a happy ending for them looking at each other's eyes, falling in love. Until the extension, obviously. <laughs> what a lovely story, guys. And then you noticed here <laughs> Mr. Sex Pierce Rex. <laughs>